Hi everyone, I'm Dawn. Welcome to my channel. I wanted to show you what the ducks are doing. This is Donald. We named him Donald and Daisy. It just made the most sense. And that's their final names. I just didn't want to name him Donald because I have a brother named Donald. So it's just, you know, we don't need another Donald in the family. But we're going to let him go hang out with his sissy. You want to go? There you go. I wanted to stay in here, but um, I'm just kind of letting them run around the house right now in the uncarpeted area. But so I have a story time for you. And um, I figured we'll just get started. I'm not gonna do makeup and do the story time because I tend to get lost a lot when I do that. And you know, I get lost, lost enough as it is. So we don't need that to happen. So this is going to be kind of a, a little bit of a sad story time, a little depressing, but uh, it's okay. Y'all can handle it. Um, you know, you might get a chuckle out of a part of it because I kind of do, but not just because it, the things people will say and do just make you laugh because what else can you do, you know? So I have to rewind quite far um, to about 19... This was way before I met Eric, and um, I was dating this guy uh, who um, they will call Marvin. We'll call him Marvin. That's not his real name, but uh, I was dating him, and we were together for quite a while. Um, it, it looked like it was getting pretty serious there for a minute. Um, he had dated my best friend in high school for like two minutes and then me <laughs> so um and she didn't even like him she was mad because she said well he waited outside my class and then he tried to hold my hand I'm like yeah that's part of the package if you agree to be someone's girlfriend they're probably going to want to hold your hand you know but um but he saw that wasn't a thing he just didn't he liked me, but he didn't want to ask me out because my mom was so gung-ho about dating. Like, she was so gung-ho against dating, I should say. But she really liked him, so it, that wasn't a problem for her. She actually loved him very much. And uh, so we were dating for quite a while, you know, dances together and all that. And then... Um, a couple years went by, and he seemed fine. He seemed fine. There was nothing, even with what I know now about depression and wanting to yourself, I, um, still looking back, I didn't see any of the signs. I can't even recall any of the signs. And I'm still friends with one of his brothers right now. We're pretty good friends. And he didn't see any either. And even now with what he knows about mental health and stuff, he's just like, there was nothing. There was no warning at all. Um, Cause I look back on it now and there was nothing. There was nothing to let us know he was on the verge of, of doing that. But, um, so I was with him at his parents' house you know, one day and uh, we were talking, everything was fine. You know, I was in his room, everything was fine. We were getting along, we weren't fighting or anything. There wasn't any, like, there was nothing. And he was like, I'll be right back. And he got up and left the room. Came back in the room with a gun. And just did it right in front of me. And um, so that was devastating. That's part of my PTSD. So I'm not going to dwell on that. I, it was just important for me to tell you that. So when I fast forward a few years you'll understand. So, so, you know, I was with him when this happened and his brother, the one I'm still friends with, he had three brothers, but the brother that I'm still tight with, he was just in the other room. So it was me and him together alone in the house with, with Marvin. So, um, a few years later go by, I get a job at this child care center and, um, a little while later, another lady gets a job there, and I, I was talking to her. She was in her interview, and I just went in and I said, oh my God, hi, and we just started talking in the middle of the interview. 
and I was like, I, I'm sorry, I haven't seen her in a long time. We went to high school together and um, we weren't really friend friends, but we weren't not friends. Like I was that kind of person, like everybody knew who I was, but I wasn't really like close friends with anybody but a couple people. I mean, I was nice to everybody. Everybody was nice to me. It was fine. It was just not, well, not everybody was nice to me. There were some real buttholes, but for the most part, you know, people were decent. And, um, and we chatted for a little while and then, so she started working there. So we became friends and started, you know, hanging out and it turned out we lived pretty close to each other. So we started hanging out together and uh, she had a couple kids. She was married. I wasn't yet married. I, I didn't, uh, I, ha I still at this point hadn't met Eric and, um, I was at her house one day. And we were just chatting about everybody we knew and what are they up to and everything. And I came to realize by this point, she wasn't 100% the most truthful person in the world. I found a lot of holes in a lot of her stories. Um, but one day, so we're sitting on our couch and we're chatting about everybody we used to know. And I brought up Marvin and she was like, yeah, it's so sad what happened to him. And she was my friend. Um, and she said the girl's name, um, was dating him at the time and he was there when it happened. And, and I just stopped and I looked at her and she's like, what? Like, um, <laughs> I was dating him at the time and she's like, oh my God. She's like, oh my God, did you just find out he was cheating on you or something? That was kind of her attitude about it. And that, that's not exactly how it went, but that was kind of what she was asking me. And I'm like, no, he wasn't. Um, I, I, I was, I was, I, I was there. I was with him. And she was like, oh, well, my friend, we'll call her Ruthie. My friend Ruthie said that he did it at her house and it was so terrible and devastating. And like, okay, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I was there. <laughs> it was me, him and his brother in the house, nobody else. So I told her exactly what had happened and she was like, Oh my God, I didn't know that's how it happened. But she was telling, relaying the story about her friend, Ruthie, so confidently, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was just a coincidence that it happened to be me and not some other person from high school she was talking to. And at the job I had, there were a couple other people there that went to high school with us. So she, when they reminisced about people from high school, they had heard this story about Ruthie too. So I didn't care that no one knew the truth or whatever. It's, I knew and his brother knew and his parents and everybody knew. So I, I was just um, let this go, but it's really weird. So I let it go. And then a few years later, I think it was, Actually, several years later, because it was right after me and Eric got married and we moved back home to my home. I had seen her at a bookstore and we started talking and she brought that up again. Like she had forgotten that we already talked about it. Like Mark Twain says, always tell the truth. You never have to remember anything. But anyway, she started in about her friend again, but it wasn't Ruthie anymore. It was a different name. So what me and Eric figured out happened is we think she got confused and thought it was another friend that she was talking to besides me that said they were there. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, it's, if you don't know the story, don't spout off like you do. You know what I mean? And, and it was weird that she would bring it up again with me, but it, I think it's just, she just totally forgot we had talked about it before and she thought it was somebody else she was talking to and thought she was talking about that person's life and and I don't know and I'm like yeah we talked about it remember it was me I, I was dating him and she's like oh and so she like tried to start saving face that's right I just got you confused got it confused with someone else's story and and I'm like, yeah, Ruthie said it was her. And she's, yeah, she did. I'm like, did you ever talk to her and tell her you knew the truth? <laughs> you know, just curious. But she said she didn't. But then I'm like, 
Now I think about it, I wonder, did Ruthie even exist? Did she just make this story up so she could seem like she knew somebody that knew somebody that did something? Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know, but I don't know why people felt, if somebody was lying, whether it was her or Ruthie, we don't know, but somebody was lying. And I just, why do people lie about such hardcore serious things? You know, I mean, this was a serious thing and it's a matter of public record. I mean, people can go get the, um, get the police report and read what happened if they really wanted to, if they were so inclined. Um, Cause then she would have known the truth. Yeah, you have to pay a little bit of money for it. But I mean, if you're gonna lie, lie with your whole chest. You know what I mean? <laughs> but like I said, I don't know if it was her lying or if Ruthie was lying to her but someone was lying. And I still, even now that, and this is gonna sound terrible of me, but had that not happened, I may have ended up married to him. And now I don't see him, but I, I mean, now I see them. I didn't see him when I was 19, 20 years old. There were a lot of red flags, not red flags about the, um, we didn't see any of those red flags, but there were a lot of other red flags that would have affected my whole life. And I didn't see them when I was 20 years old and had that not happened, I, like I said, may have ended up married to him, which is horrible for me to think this way. But then I, I would not have met Eric and I would not have had Marshall. You know what I mean? So, you know, what is that saying about when the, leaf when a butterfly flaps its wings or something like that you know everything changes i don't remember it exactly but you know what i'm talking about but i was definitely you know like i was devastated when it happened but like the next day i was fine like i never shed another tear over it or anything not that i wanted him to be gone it was just that I w wasn't on the outside. I wasn't reacting the way people thought I should be reacting. It is the way it is. It is what I meant to say. And um, it was bad though. It was pretty terrible. I had to call my mom and tell her, mom, I need you to come pick me up. And she was like, well, why can't Marvin bring you home? And I'm like, I told her why. And, um, and the police were there and everything. And she didn't want to come pick me up. I told her what happened. And a police officer talked to my mom, said, I'll, I will bring her home. And, um, but then I found out she didn't want to come because she was so shaken up. And my mother, she could not drive if she was shaken up or upset or nervous or had a headache. She just was not someone that should be behind the wheel of a car. So, I mean, she didn't drink or anything, but she just, when she got nervous, it was like, it was a mess. And, um, so in hindsight, it was a good idea that the police officer brought me home. And I just, and even looking back on it now, I'm not as mortified by it now. Like when I think of, like I'm trying not to remember all the images of it because it really was not like what you see in the movies. It was, mm. but I was sitting in the police car just, like numb, I guess, just like, and he was like asking questions, not like really for the investigation, but just to have a conversation with me and the police officer. And he was saying, I'm, I'm really sorry this happened to you. This is, um, you know, he was very nice and uh, walked me upstairs, made sure I got there okay. My, the police officer talked to my mom for a few minutes and told him what happened and, uh, they, they had to investigate it a little bit, but there it was pretty much cut and dry, you know, because there were people like starting rumors that me and his brother had something to do with it. And there was no evidence <laughs> to say that. Um, so it was just, it was a mess. But anyway, this was all about my, my friend telling me about Ruthie and saying that she was dating him because i was like wait, wait first of all i was thinking 
who is this bitch saying she's dating him? Was he dating some bitch behind my back? And I know she wasn't there, you know? But then it just, it was like, he wasn't. And this, either this girl lied and made it up because I know a girl by the same name had a crush on him and hated me. And uh, I did tell my friend that too. I said, well, there was a one girl named Ruthie that had a crush on him and she hated me, but she was psycho and he never would have gone out with her and he was with me anyway and she was he wasn't at her house because I was at his house with him when this happened so but anyway that's it I just wanted to share that with you put your thoughts down below in the comments you know it's just like I said I don't know who told the lie but somebody lied and just what kind of person lies about something like that it's just it's amazing to me but anyway, I gotta go, my break's over, I got some work to do, so I will talk to everyone later, bye.